Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to Step 2 in our Free Steps to Gladiator for Destruction Warlock. Before we go any further, if you've missed Step 1, be sure to go back and watch that first. If you've already seen it, then you're in the right place. Step 2 is all about preparing for PvP, including how you should be min-maxing your damage, and then we'll be covering how to make the most out of the crowd control you have at your disposal. So let's get started. Dealing damage as destruction is honestly one of the hardest things to do, and has a lot of factors involved. As you probably know, a huge percentage of your damage is coming from Chaos Bolt. It's your hardest hitting ability, and often one of the only ways to score kills and create pressure. However, is one of the most heavily interrupted and locked down abilities in the game, with many people not kicking anything except Chaos Bolt, or simply just line of sight in you whenever you're trying to get one off. We'll cover some effective strategies to ensure you have the highest chance of landing Chaos Bolt shortly. But first, let's cover your consistent pressure. Destruction has incredibly underrated consistent pressure. Even without landing Chaos Bolts, you can still deal a lot of damage, specifically with the instant damage spec we touched on in part 1 of this guide, which is when playing Roaring Blaze coupled with Cremation. So how do you deal damage without landing Chaos Bolts, you might be thinking? Well, it involves a few factors. First is maintaining Immolate on as many targets as possible. This is honestly your number one priority. Not only does it deal good damage, but will also generate you shards, and on top of that, proc your flashpoint. This is also very easy to achieve, as teams will often more likely than not, never be interrupting you on Immolate. Cataclysm is an AoE way to apply your Immolate. Look to use this on enemies behind pillars, grouped up enemies, or even grouped up pets, such as when Death Knights pop their Apocalypse. The burst from this ability should also not be underestimated. Due to the lack of travel time, you can cast Cataclysm after a bolt and then a conflag straight after and all three abilities will hit at the same time depending on distance from the enemy. The other important tool is always making sure to use your conflag. It's always best to use this before it reaches two charges, as letting it cap at two is going to be potentially wasted damage. This is especially important if playing with Roaring Blaze and Cremation. Whilst Incinerate is just your basic way to build up shards, you'll not really be using this other than when left to free cast. The damage is negligible and should only be used for the shard generation if you already have Immolate up on all targets and Conflag is on cooldown. Moving on to burst damage, it's of course all going to be coming from your Chaos Bolts. First, we'll discuss how to deal the maximum damage for those rare occasions where you can freely cast, and then we'll discuss how to effectively score Chaos Bolts. So, how do you go about dealing the maximum damage as destruction and get those fabled Chaos Bolts that one-shot you that we've seen some in some rare occasions? First of all, you're going to want to have 5 shards. After that, you're going to want to cast a Rain of Fire to instantly spend 3 shards and build up Grimoire of Supremacy stacks. After that, you're going to want to build up shards with Incinerate or Conflag. Bear in mind, if you have Havoc on a target, you will gain double the shards. Then spend shards on Chaos Bolts if you can free cast or Rain of Fire if you can't. Once you reach 10 stacks or more, pop your Dark Soul instability and proceed to try and set up a Chaos Bolt. Now this Chaos Bolt, if it lands, will one-shot somebody. Also, bear in mind, you always want to have stacks of Backdraft before you cast the Chaos Bolt. Now, a common problem is not being able to land Chaos Bolts due to enemy teams being extremely disruptive. Well, there is a few things you can do to counter this. First is baiting kicks on different schools of magic. 
trying to get kicked on fear, immolate or even cataclysm can be a great way to get kicks out of the way and allow you to cast chaos bolts. Second is abusing fear. This is honestly the most important factor in landing chaos bolts. If they kick the fear, you can cast. If they don't, they're crowd controlled by the fear and then you can land a bolt. So damned if they do, damned if they don't. Utilizing your crowd control is another great way of ensuring bolts land. You can land bolts off infernal stuns, shadow fury and even your mortal coil. Combine any of these crowd controls into a chaos bolt can be a surefire way of effectively landing the bolt. And then you've got the simplest way and that's just faking interrupts. If you know the team only wants to kick chaos bolts then try to fake with them. Once you have flashpoint, backdraft and also reverse entropy, chaos bolts are a surprisingly fast cast time. You should also not forget that Neverward makes you immune to magical kicks. So things like Counterspell, other Warlocks kicks, Demon Hunters, Wind Shear and even Death Knight's kicks will not be able to go through Neverward. And if you have your Demonic Resolve up, you're immune to all interrupts. So during this time, go wild. Warlock in general is one of the most disruptive classes in the game and Destruction is no exception. The crowd control at Destruction's disposal is Fear, Mortal Coil, Spell Lock, Shadow Fury, Infernal Stun and finally Entrenched in Flame. Fear is the strongest ability you have in your arsenal without a doubt. Not only is this on a different school to all your damaging abilities but it has no cooldown, doesn't break from your dots and can be used either to peel for yourself or your team, crowd control healers for you to score kills or even used as a way to land chaos bolts on your enemy. Used primarily in conjunction with Havoc, Mortal Coil again has multiple uses. You can use it to peel for your teammates, you can disrupt enemy team setups and you can also stop important casts. You can crowd control a healer and a DPS or you can use it offensively to enable you to land a chaos bolt cast. Just your standard interrupt. Use it either offensively or defensively once more. When you have pressure you can use it on healers to deny heals and enable you to score kills. You can use it on crowd control directed on your healer to survive setups or you can even use it on crowd control directed on yourself to get more damage out. Shadow Fury is a casted 3 second AoE stun, used primarily to ensure you land Chaos Bolt casts due to Shadow Fury being on the Shadow School as the name suggests. As if it gets interrupted, you can then cast Chaos Bolt. If the stun lands, you can obviously then follow up the stun with a Chaos Bolt. Shadow Fury is also a great tool for peeling for your team when enemies are on fear diminishing returns or you need to peel multiple enemies at the same time. Now Infernal is often considered only as an offensive cooldown. Well, this is wrong. Infernal is again a great way to be disruptive to the enemy team. If a Mage Rogue is doing their setup, you can Infernal for the instant stun and then follow it up with either a Mortal Coil or Shadow Fury for some extended pills. Also don't neglect the fact you can use Infernal to ensure a Chaos Bolt cast lands once more. Our last crowd control on the list is Entrenched in Flame. Often heavily underestimated as a crowd control but honestly is extremely strong. You can use this route to ensure cast land if enemies are line of sight in you. What you can do is root them with your conflag and then either land a Chaos Bolt cast or even a Fear into more Chaos Bolts. It's also a great tool to combine with Fear. You can Fear the target so they run away from you and then follow it up with an Entrenched in Flame route whilst you freely cast on the target while they're out of kick range. On top of that you can also use it on healers with no dispel ready to root them out of range from their DPS in some certain situations. Okay then guys, that just about rounds off step 2 in our 3 Steps to Gladiator series. Stay tuned for step 3 where we'll be going to be covering entering the arena, including picking the correct composition and the objectives of your class once you're actually inside of the arena. And as always, thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed this video.